Hello, Trust Swap community. Jeff Kardakis here with Graham Dogger, the founder and CE, co CEO of Obit. Uh, Graham, super excited for you to be here with us today so we could ask you some questions and get to know Obit in depth here. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. Perfect. So, at a high level, how would you describe what makes the Obit ecosystem different? And how would you describe this to someone you know, who maybe isn't as familiar with crypto? Like, just a really nice, easy elevator pitch. Sure. Um, Orbit, the Orbit Network is a, is a financial platform that uses network effects to create greater total returns than you would get from traditional, a traditional asset management platform. So when we say network effects, we mean that existing users of the network benefit uh, as more and more people and more and uh, more and more people use the network, um, which is how all of the big tech has grown. Uh, so we're bringing that to the asset management industry. Gotcha. And so how does that exactly play into the application? So what is the app? What does it do? And where does that network effect play in? So um, what we've done is we've, we've created a way that pretty much anyone can access various products um, and they're only el eligible products that the users, what people are eligible to, to buy or, or use is what they see in the app. Um, so it depends on the jurisdiction that they're in, whether they're a qualified investor or not, and they get to see different products. And what we've done is we've managed to figure out a way that people can come in and buy products um, and we segregate all the value in a way that's compliant, uh, but uh, we managed to combine the network effects. And when, when I talk about network effects, I mean the redistribution of network revenues. Um, so this is, this is something very new. Uh, normally uh, in any financial service, uh, fees exit the system. They're always leaving the ecosystem and they're, they're going into somebody else's pockets. They're not compounding anymore. Mm -hmm. um, with us, 80% of the fees continuously compound because they never leave the system. Uh, and this is how you see the additional returns for various products. Got you. And so then to kind of add a little bit of color and clarity, what kind of products are we talking that are in this uh, network? So if, you, if we take it at the high level for sort of financial institutions and professional, sophisticated or accredited investors, there are uh, securities, the security token products, uh, which are essentially tokenized shares um, that represent a growing reserve of, of various different assets. Um, basically any of the stocks and bonds and structured products like ETFs that you can buy on normal trading apps. Um, they're all in there um, and there is essentially, uh, you're essentially buying shares in a growing reserve of those assets. Um, so that's for the qualified person. Um, the, the other side of things that we've managed to do is we've managed to figure out a way that we can have a product variant, um, which is not the security, which essentially lets someone play a game and have a virtual simulation of buying something that's very similar. Uh, and this is, this is how we allow the access for all. Um, because they're products that act very similarly and we can combine the same sort of redistribution of revenues and, and the network effects like we've gone over, but uh, it means that everyone can actually buy them, which has never been the case before. Got you. So you have these tokens that aren't securities and they're pegged to something or acting like a specific stock. Very much so. So yeah. let, let's, let's take, you know, the one that I always like to talk about, Tesla. It's the one that's the hot yeah. one. Everyone loves talking about Tesla. So you have a Tesla stock. So obviously that's a security. Um, so how do you flip that Tesla stock and make it so that, you know, the everyday Joe can invest or participate in this pseudo Tesla-esque thing? Like, how does this all work? And how does the, you know, access for all work for this Tesla stock in the Orbit ecosystem? Sure. So there's a couple of points to it. One is a kind of legal and regulatory point. And we kind of keep that one to ourselves right now, just because uh, um, we want to get going. Uh, and then, you know, when people come and quiz us and go, hey, how did you do that? Uh, you know, authorities, we can say, this is how we've done it. This is why it's cool. Um, so we, we don't really talk about that bit too, too deeply anywhere. But um, for, the, for the end user, what's, what's cool is you're essentially going to have uh, access to a platform that has a particular token on it, uh, which can only be accessible on that platform. That's one of the sort of key, uh, one of the key regulatory points you, going on. Um, so that's not freeway tokens. That's a different token that's only yeah. within this closed ecosystem. And you can essentially stick that token into whichever virtual simulation that you want to. It's a bit like having casino tokens for a game. Um, 
And so, and you can come in and you can do that. And there's very carefully done legal breaks. So there's no obligation on certain things. And, and our view on that is that if you provide a utility value within the ecosystem, which is another reason why freeway tokens are so important in our ecosystem, um, the value of the freeway token in the long run will be about the fidelity of that system, how much it, it is similar, whether or not it's legally obligated to be or not. Um, and this is what creates the, uh, not just the proof of stake, but a genuine staking system, an incentivizing system, very, very, you know, it, it comes from the original Bitcoin um, point, which is everyone's incentivized to do the right thing. Um, they don't, it's not about laws, it's about incentives. And we've built that into the, into our system. Got you. So somebody wants to get, um, you know, participating in Tesla. And so they're able to get one of these tokens that act as a simulation of the Tesla stock. Are these to are these tokens that only work in the internal, uh, Obit economy? Are yeah. these, um, <clears throat> are these backed by anything? Like what is this simulation of like, how does, where does that token play into real world value or does it because it's not a security it's a virtual simulation so right. legally there are no obligations for us to do anything at all uh, that's very very important so when people come and they stake their we call them orbit network tokens so you come in and you get an orbit network token it's this sort of ethereal thing um, and then you stake it in something you could stake it in a us dollar virtual simulation which just so happens to match your know, orbit network token one for one right. or you could go and put your orbit network token and stake it into a virtual simulation of tesla stocks but not just tesla stocks orbit network growing tesla stocks and so this it, this gives you the opportunity to go long if you choose to yeah. which is uh, you know from a, a lot of our perspectives that's a lot that's the sensible thing to do in 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 sort of stock markets anyway yeah. um it allows you to go virtually you know simulate going long and seeing a, a slowly growing quickly growing we, we don't know how the network's going to be used um uh reserve of tesla stocks but a virtual simulation of it um which is is quite important in terms of the regulatory got you makes sense and so then in terms of the backing because you know let's say that simulation of the tesla stock has a value of 400 or maybe it's less now after they did their share split or whatever it's 400 let's say it's backed essentially because people have to buy that simulation token so you could say it's backed by you know fiat currency because people are essentially paying to purchase those tokens would that be a correct assumption or statement i would say that we're very careful on the fact that we can't really say that it's backed by anything except sure the continued fidelity of the system. Right. So that's that's the key. Now, in the background, if I was going to play a virtual simulation with somebody and they, uh, I can't participate. Let's say I can't participate in securities, right? I, I'm not allowed to. I'm not over. I'm not. I'm not old enough. Um, so I can't participate in them. But if I'm going to find someone to provide a, a virtual simulation of those, um, I would like to find somebody that really goes and buys those. Tesla stocks, so that if they do go to four thousand dollars next week, and I pick the right virtual simulation to put in, um, then that's great. Uh, that person had Tesla stocks, so he can afford um, to uh, help me unstake myself from my Orbit Network tokens yeah. uh, back to Orbit Network more Orbit Network tokens than what I started with. And hopefully, there's somebody that will uh, exchange those Orbit Network tokens back to some sort of currency that that's off the system, even though there might be no legal obligations to do so. Gotcha. Okay. So that, that clears it up. Thank you for that. So then, <laughs> you know, I guess, you, you know, you look at this system right now and some people might be saying, okay, well, this just seems like a really, it's more of a complex way to just buy, you know, a stock or to hold stock um, <laughs> and to have, you know, that value fluctuate. So what's, you know, you mentioned the network effect. So now you're holding this Tesla stock. And it's a sim or it's a simulation. My mistake. I'm probably going to make a couple of mistakes like that. You're holding this simulation. Um, why would I hold it on Obit versus you know on you know TD Ameritrade or something like that? Like, what's the benefit to be using Obit? Yeah, sure. So that's where the network effects come in. You're right. So uh, how does how did Facebook, Google, YouTube, Airbnb grow over with their network effects? Everyone hears network effects and they go great. Well, those. They became more valuable because more people joined the marketplace or just more and more people used it so that google and facebook are great examples because suddenly the advertisers have this great targeted advertising audience 
uh, as more and more people use it, network effects, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, for us, we redistribute the revenues, and that's fine. Um, but uh, we redistribute the revenues into the underlying assets or virtual simulations. So it means we combine all of that. So why did they grow? They grew because you, you got value, tangible value from those networks that you couldn't get anywhere else. So that's, that's the key point. So for us, your virtual simulation will virtually simulate better than it would if you had bought real stocks yeah. with TD Meritory, right? Um, that, that's, that's the way it works. Certainly, it's probably not the best example because we're, we're not in the US yet. But you know, your tradition, whichever broker you'd like to use for, for buying your shares, um, we would argue that uh, there is uh, an opportunity, the virtual simulations have the potential to outperform virtually um, those, uh, right. those, those stocks just because we're redistributing revenues. And, and until you really get in and look at how much money leaks out of the ecosystem for, for, for fees, you wouldn't believe the, the amount of um, returns or virtual simulated returns that could be achieved. You really wouldn't. Uh, well, I mean, I think, you know, a lot of people in the crypto space, even just super niche, you know, people see what Binance is pulling in for revenues and profits. They're doing more than a lot of the banks in the world. So, you know, when you're in the exchange business, there's a ton, billions of dollars of revenue and m value that's flowing through that ecosystem. So for sure, those fees are absolutely massive. So and now what you're saying is you're taking those fees and you are redistributing those fees. Let's say somebody um those fees so for example i make a trade in tesla well now that that trade has a fee associated to it so what is then going to happen is that fee would get redistributed to the people who have already held or are already holding those simulations of tesla so essentially the earlier you get in on this simulation game, I guess you you know how you want to regulatory call it, um, the more of the fees you're going to accumulate because you're going to be accumulating fees for the longevity of that cycle. Is that accurate? It's not far off. It's, uh, it's, it feels that way. That's the important thing. Uh, the simulation feels like that. And, um, and you, uh, yeah, I mean, to give you an idea, um, just a theoretical example, not something that we could, we could possibly guarantee or anything, but uh, if you simulated a thousand dollars being, this is just, we, we don't charge 1%, but you, imagine you'll buy some, anything for a thousand dollars and there's a 1% fee on top. Then you, uh, the next person comes along and buys a thousand dollars and there's a dollar fee. And then you reinvest those fees every time. So yeah. the first guy, he, he pays a thousand dollars, he pays a dollar fee, He's, um, he's got um, well, 1%, sorry, $10 fee. Right. And, and um, so he's actually got $1,010, right? Uh, he's stuck, he paid 1,000, okay, he paid a fee, he's got $1,010. The next person comes along, he pays $1,000, puts that, the extra $10, he's got $2,020 yeah. divided by two. So when you start to add, add, add those things up, um, what essentially happens is the first guy there would have $1,015, whilst the next one, you know, it's, and it starts to yeah. go from there. So that after a, a thousand transactions, that first person has about 40% additional returns uh, because of the network effects. And that, that's just down to the first Facebook user or the first Google user got yeah. more network effect value than the millionth. But that gives right. you an example of how the network effects just take over. For sure. Yeah, because you're, you're reaping the reward of everything of all the transactions that happen within that simulated asset after you, you know, take take part in that position. So that's a super you, you might do really well in that in that game. That's know, right. Like, yeah, because essentially it's you know I, I know in some of your wording it's you have to be careful with wording like guarantees and all these kind of things. But would it potentially be a correct statement to say you are guaranteed or yeah you'd be guaranteed a higher ROI? Uh, I'm, I'm sure you might have to legally sidestep this question, but you're guaranteed a legally higher R or a, a higher ROI in this simulation if anybody comes in after you because you're going to be compounding how much of that tokenized asset or however you guys phrase it. If you start with one Tesla share, well, you can go to two, to three, to four, to five. And I know the jargon's a little bit off, but essentially you're going to be compounding how much you're holding in comparison to just being able to, you know, ride the ups and the downs 
of what that Tesla share is doing. Is, is that accurate or where do you need to kind of reel back the legal jargon on? We certainly wouldn't argue with you. Sure, okay, gotcha. <laughs> that's, that's it, okay, perfect. Right on, so I'm um, jumping into the team a little bit. This is the one thing that really caught my eye initially with mm -hmm. Obit. Um, so you guys have a team, it's an absolute powerhouse. If nobody's checked out the website, obit.io and scroll down a little bit, you guys have some pretty powerful Fortune 500 logos listed there of you know past experiences from team members. Um, where did this team come from? How did you put it together? And what are some of the active roles that they're taking part in the Obit project? Sure. So I'll start. I'll give I'll give a bit of, of background. We started this this project in October 2017. So the world was a very very different place in the crypto world at that point, and uh, we stepped into the, the fray, as it were. And um, initially we were looking at a gold related product, security token only. Um, so a little bit ahead of its time really um, back then, because everyone was just trying to do utility tokens mm -hmm. and currencies, new currencies, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how we started. So um, what basically happened was the, the three founders got together, we figured out what we wanted to do. We started to ideate and then we really quickly realized that um, what we really need to do is get some validation on what we're doing, both from a traditional point of view and this brand new way of doing things in the crypto space. So um, our backgrounds are, were quite helpful for that, you know, well connected as it were. I had my background software and database architecture 20 odd years ago, but then I spent a lot of time helping um, regulated uh, firms uh, partly in the law, in the legal industry, so big law firms and financial services uh, companies with a number of regulatory growth strategies. Mm -hmm. And so I learned a lot about regulation and met a lot of people along the way. So we ended up going to see a number of close contacts uh, that then introduced other contacts. And that's really how we built the team. And, you know, some of the people that we've got, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't really know how we got them in the first place, really. It's like they just loved what we were doing and they wanted to be part of it. And, uh, you know, you go look at that team. Uh, you know, I don't think anyone will mind me saying, but um, that is a unpaid team. OK, that, that is a team that has come on for equity and tokens only. Uh, and some of them have been with us for over two and a half years. You know, obviously people get paid along the way eventually. But, you know, you get the idea that they really came on and they, they became part of this project. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, they were quite a, they weren't an insignificant amount of our equity fundraising e part either. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it, we're really lucky from that point of view, uh, to have some of the most amazing people on the team. That's really incredible. Yeah. And I think that speaks volumes. Um, I didn't know that about being unpaid, but uh -huh. that's, that's even more of a, you know, bullish sentiment that yes, these guys are in it for the vision. So that's incredibly cool. Um, so jumping into the uh, freeway token uh, a little bit, how does how does the freeway token play into this? Because you have fees that are being redistributed to people within the simulation. So, you know, one of the questions is, OK, well, well, but then, you know, why am I holding the freeway token if fees are redistributed to the, you know, the simulation game players? How does that all work? So so there's there's a couple of points. So. The, the network effects work because there's um, because there are fees, right? And the freeway token comes into into play because it actually allows someone to pay their fees at a discount in freeway tokens. So that gives you a key utility value that um, a user, depending on how much they want to use a system, and that includes um, qualified investors as well, right? So it includes institutions that want to buy the security products. They can use the freeway tokens to um, to get their, their fees half price. And you know, if you're paying 22 basis points on a $1 billion uh, investment into the Orbit network for the S&P 500 ETF shares or something like that, it starts to make sense to try and knock that down to 11 basis points um, by paying for it with freeway tokens. Right. And so we've really designed it to allow us to fuel the operations of the Orbit network forever because they're 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 providing that utility value within the ecosystem 
Got you. Got you. And so, you know, getting, so purchasing these tokens, because I think, you know, let's say you have some institutional investors, they're coming in, they want to spend some large amounts of money or really anyone who's not as familiar with crypto, I think getting into crypto is sometimes a fairly large hurdle. You know, like, I don't think they're gonna be going to Uniswap to be buying yeah. these freeway tokens and then transferring it to the app. So what's, what's going to be your plan for getting these tokens used on mass? What's, what are your on ramps? Sure. So uh, for the institutions, we, we will sort of help them a little bit, um, but they will, once we're up and running with the whole system, uh, which will take a bit of time because not everyone will be available for, straight away, right? The virtual simulations are coming first. Um, and for a good reason, we want to prove out the redistribution network effects model um, because you need that. And we need to get through a good six months of dealing with the regulators in a very positive light which we're pretty confident of because you've, you've seen the logos on the, on the website. You know, we're not afraid of regulation. We come from that background. Um, uh, with that in place, the institutions are going to come in. And to be honest, we, we just plan to allow users to, to bring their freeway tokens to, to the platform. And in, if an institution wants to come in and buy them, uh, if they press a button, you know, you know just right. add it. you're on there and you've got a transaction. Would you like to top up your account with freeway tokens? You know, uh, Got you. yes, please. If it's going to save me some money, yes, please. You know, that it would be as simple as that for them on the trading platform. Um, and uh, of course, that that's going to be an interesting level of demand because you know, users can demand them for as much as they want to save their fees and how much they're using the, the platform. For sure. Yeah. So, kind of bottom line is there's going to be kind of like a quick, easy access button directly on the app you know, pay with credit card, cat, like obviously not cash, but some kind of digital government currency and you're able to get these tokens added into your account. Yeah, exactly. So, and that's for institutions on the trading platform as well as, you know, for everyone else. I mean, that's one aspect. There's, there's future aspects. There's a whole staple model that we've have got planned to bring in third party financial service providers like custodians and um, even asset managers or investment companies um, to, uh, to allow them to connect with this and provide the services to users, um, because for, you know an institution isn't going to just stick everything on their, you know, on, on their account and hope that it stays there. They're going to want custodian. So, yeah. um, you know, that's that's another thing that we're bringing. And then the freeway token is the um, is part of the proof of stake model, but also part of the uh, continuous confirmation rewards that are, uh, you know, will be part of the system in, in the future as we try to decentralize it further. Got you. Right on. Well, Graham, thank you so much. So for anybody who is listening in, uh, Abit and the Freeway Token are launching their token sale in partnership, in tandem, in integration with the TrustSwap Launchpad on the 20th at 9 a.m. PST, the 20th of October, 2020. Um, you could just type that into Google, Abit, TrustSwap, boom, it should be top thing on You'll find the Medium link, you can navigate there. Um, head to obit.io, also on the top banner of obit.io, you'll be able to see the link directly to the Freeway Token website. You can navigate to all their social links from there. So Graham, thank you so much uh, for popping on. Any Anything else that you want people to be directed to, to check out or any last thoughts? Yeah, I mean, obviously keep an eye on the TrustSwap announcements, make sure you, you, you get in there and uh, check out the website, join the waiting list for the app. And uh, yeah, just uh, get in touch and we'll get you subscribed and ready for when it launches.